It's the NFL on EA Sports. And on center stage is the Lumberjacks, leader at quarterback. After his last game, he's now across 3,000 yards for the season. It's the Lumberjacks and the Snowhawks. And it's coming up next on Madden NFL 24. With the Wasatch Mountains overlooking us, EA Sports so proud to welcome you to the capital city of Utah, Salt Lake City. Today, we've got a Week 13 matchup for you here, as it'll be the Lumberjacks of Vancouver taking on the Snowhawks of Salt Lake City. Hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you look at this Salt Lake City ball club. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for the visiting Vancouver club, it's late in the year. We all know it. We've seen the calendar for these guys. Their bodies could probably use a break, but they have to push on. The calendar has turned to December, and we're in the home stretch now as we're underway in Week 13. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they will be let out by their second-year quarterback. And there's a word that constantly gets thrown around with this guy when you talk to anyone in the building. Potential. They are sky high on what they believe he can grow into in the role of a starting quarterback. In addition, there are plenty around the league who think that as well. And years from now, he can still be leading this offense out. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Operating from the gun, Giles firing quickly, but it's incomplete. When you look at this defense, they come into this one ranked number 17, so just starting the bottom half of the league against the pass. And even though that's not the greatest ranking in the world, one thing you can say, they get after the quarterback. They're the top 10 in the league in sacks. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back to throw again. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. That's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. 11 yards there, first down. Looking to throw. Giles. Looking left side of he's got a man. That's Clark. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and it'll be second down. Operating from the gun. Giles. Throws right side, and that's complete. A big play there. 42 yards. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. They'll try to run this one in. This move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft, and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Eluding the pressure right, and he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. 
They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Back to throw. Giles. And he'll take it into the end zone for a touchdown. It's their quarterback. Touchdown number 18 on the year. And the Snowhawks will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. That was a really good opening drive on a number of fronts. Ten plays, very methodical, set the tone. So you know right now, if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're on the sidelines saying, okay, what do we have to dial up in order to get off the field a lot faster? Because both sides are out there for ten plays, but one side comes off energized, and the other side comes off with some questions. Extra point right down the middle, and that makes the score 7-0. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they will be led out by their 6-4 quarterback. And no excitement. Unless, he, unless you're on the defensive team of last week, in his numbers. Because the only excitement he really generated was the one interception he threw. Yeah, no touchdown pass. Yeah, and his team wasn't real thrilled about that. And they lost the game. So, I know this week has been tough on him because he's been working hard. Fundamentals, football, finding the right targets. And bottom line, how do they get a win? After the incompletion, here's second and ten from the 20. He's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. Now you look at this defense. They were very strong in that victory from a week ago. I just consider myself fortunate that I'm not in charge of the offensive line. They gave up <laughs> seven sacks last week. And if things don't improve in this game, the head coach isn't going to be looking at the offensive line. He's going to be looking at the offensive line coach. And that's when things get dicey. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. Fielded just inside the 30. It's a 45-yard punt, then eight on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. A nice-looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. They'll run on first down. Fields. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Fields. And after the good gain last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. If you're these receivers, you got to be ready because when he's going to throw it quick on that RPO, he's going to throw it quick. And this is why you spend time with your guy either in the offseason, during the week, the whole bundle. Because sometimes it's just telepathy. You both see the same thing, and he knows get the ball to him right away. Caught here by Conley. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And that gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Off the bootleg, Giles. 
And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. Now it's second and ten. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. That's caught. Touchdown. From three yards out. And the Snowhawks have taken a 13 to nothing first quarter lead. Another impressive drive. So they're two for two. Two touchdowns, Charles. A great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they've played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. Point after, right down the middle. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. They find themselves in a good size hole here, in a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And this passing game's whole offense really didn't show up in the loss last week, and it hasn't started all that great here either. Yeah, and they can't let that incompletion become an uh-oh moment. Like, oh boy, here we go again, just like last week. Each game is its own entity, treated as such. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 13, it's a first down. After he cleared the line of scrimmage, nice little hole developed. Yeah, yeah, great blocking right there at the start. But how about his vision, finding the open spaces and letting his feet carry him to him? And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. And right side, they're going to go option here. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. But now he appears to be in some pain. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Third and 12. Looking to throw his mills. In trouble, and he's taken down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. They said there was a lot of discussion in their defensive team meeting room after last week's performance. They had seven sacks. Something in the water. There's one in the first quarter. A lot of discussion, a lot of excitement because now everyone wants to get involved with this. Who's going to continue that process? Who's going to get to the quarterback this week? But they have to be careful. When you have that much pressure, they want to use it against you. Draws, screens, those types of plays. We'll see if they do that. This is fielded at the 27. It's a 49-yard punt, but subtract nine there for the return. And they will take over first and 10. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And a week ago, as you get a look at the numbers, well over 100 yards, he was on fire. He was on fire. Obviously, the offensive line was on fire, all the guys who were trying to assist him. But you know who else was? The play caller. Because his ego totally got out of the way. And he kept calling the plays that were working over and over, and they really didn't stop it. Now the challenge, can they duplicate it? 38-yard line, second and nine. Operating from the gun, Giles. He finds his man complete. That's Fields. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Looking to throw, Giles. The Conley's got it over the middle. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Again, he'll drop to throw. 
And a quick throw here, that's complete. His fourth catch already in this first quarter. It's a first down. 14 0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Salt Lake City with the football here to begin quarter two. As they've got it with a first and ten. Now a handoff up the middle. It's Fields. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Back to throw. Giles. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. And that is no good. I oh, hit it well from distance, but he couldn't work it back in. And this will remain a two-touchdown game. Yeah, 55 yards is anything but a gimme. You've got to really concentrate on your leg swing and proper technique. This time, though, he's unable to convert. Well, the Vancouver offense ready for their next drive. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. It's a pickup of three. Brings up second and seven. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. A gain of 13. It's a first down. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. And a second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. On third down, here's Mills. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And the athleticism on the spin move allows him to pick up the first before he's brought down. And now it looks like we're going to get a timeout here. We've got a man shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Off the play fake, Mills. That's caught by Tucker. And down inside the 15 he goes. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he'll find his way down right around the 12. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Brings up second. Inside the 10 to the 8 yard line. But if you're going to have a relay race, you're probably going to pick your backs and receivers to run it, but don't underestimate the conditioning of the offensive line. They're out there just dictating things, staying on the field, and keeping a long drive going. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 9. They call it a loss of a yard there. 
And it'll be fourth down. That's a great job of tackling right there. If he could have made the first man miss, maybe he could have taken it into the end zone. Instead, they stopped it pretty well right in his tracks. And you often see that in the red zone. Offense has to be quick. In this case, the defense is quicker. And his kick is good. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. So not exactly the response they were hoping for, but they'll take the three to at least get them on the score sheet. Yeah, now is not the time to panic. All is well, somewhat calm, only down 14 to nothing. So continue to play your game, take the points when they're there, and put the emphasis on your defense to go out and get you the football down. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Salt Lake City's offense back onto the field. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send down the field goal unit and then to not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. On first down, Fields. He'll get it across midfield down to the 49. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Ball start, offense. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Fields. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield strike. Well, this offense on third down today, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and nine. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. He's got the hookup with Conley. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. It'll be a loss of two on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Well, the Vancouver offense ready for their next drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But let's have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily, man. After the incompletion, here's second and ten from the 20. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And able to use a stiff arm for a little bit of leverage before he's taken down. A pretty good game. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. To throw, Mills. And his throw's going to be incomplete. In most pass defenses, the guy playing safety has the ability to roam free and try and go to the football. But when you're in man, you've got to cover just like a guy playing out on the corner. Lock up on the receiver and go to the football. That's exactly what he did, batting that one away. Now left side on the swing pass. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 12 yards there and a first down. And the Vancouver first down. Mills going to keep it on the option right. And he lost 
the football. And while all of that was going on, we have an injured player out there in need of some attention. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. That's caught by Tucker. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second and a yard. Mills now. He finds his man complete. That's Stevens. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. Mills now looks to throw on first down. Throwing it in traffic there, and that's complete. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the 18-yard line. Mills to throw it. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Heavy set out there on third and one. Mills. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Touchdown! From four yards out. And the Lumberjacks get a late score here the final minute of the first half. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. And he's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. So that drive, 12 plays in length. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Back out comes this offense now late in this first half. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Throwing in traffic there, and that's complete. Timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Throwing on first down, Giles. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And he slings one that's incomplete. Oh, that's certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. Off the play fake, Giles. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. That was a long pass attempt downfield, and the ball was popped up in the air. And how come things go from really fast 
to almost slow motion when the ball's up in the air and the defender's unable to haul it in before it hits the ground. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. And I feel like my man Old Mo momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. The final second ticks by, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Things definitely getting inter... Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. So a four-point game here as we get set to resume action in this third quarter of play. And we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback. And this offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. As they begin their second half here, Charles, offensively, you know, not where they want to be, obviously. They're losing in this ball game but very much within striking distance. We'll see what adjustments they make in the second half. Is that the old glass half full, half empty type of a deal? Which way do you want to look at it? Because you're right, they're down on the scoreboard, but they're definitely opportunities now because if they want to go ahead and get going in this one, get back to the running game. I think there are going to be some places to go with it, and I think the offensive line will appreciate the chance to fire out. And hit people. That's a good point because they virtually have nothing going in the ground game in that first half. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Hands it off out of the gun. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. They were looking good on second down, but now they're backed up five yards by the false start, and it's second and eight. Looking to throw. Hillman. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. from the gun. Hillman. He's got his target. That's complete. Look at the big fella go. And touchdown. A big play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Lumberjacks have taken the lead here in this third quarter. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Extra point splits the uprights, and it's now 17-14. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And it'll be first and goal at the seven-yard line. 
The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't he? He really does, and I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame, and any time he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Second and goal at the seven-yard line. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. And they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can. But this is third and goal. And it's caught. Touchdown. From six yards away. And the Lumberjacks take the force fumble and convert it into six points. Extra point right down the middle. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Salt Lake City's offense back onto the field. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points too, Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch, partner, for both of those units. And they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. Throwing again on second and 10. Giles. And he rifles one incomplete. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. This is brought in at the 21. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Vancouver offense out and about set for another series. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. They'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. Well, it was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving them exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. Third and 19. Back to throw. Hillman. And that is incomplete. Partner, the way this offense has marched up and down the field during this game, it's almost a surprise to see an incomplete pass on third down, isn't it? Yeah, they have had their foot on the gas all game long, but here finally stalling out. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. Salt Lake City's offense back onto the field. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. 
Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Off play action. Giles. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. And they bring their punter out there now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Well, the Vancouver offense ready for their next drive. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tempt to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And he'll manage only a couple here up to the 25. They'll come up facing third and five. Looking to throw. Hillman. Ah, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And they'll send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. Salt Lake City's offense back onto the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Throwing to start the drive. Giles over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. Only able to gain a couple there, and that'll make it second down. Brings up second and eight at the 26-yard line. Back to throw. Giles. It's caught. Here's Langford. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Looking to throw, Giles. So now a fresh set of downs, first and ten after roughing the passer. Up the middle they go. It's Fields. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Brings up second and nine. In motion, the tight end. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Fields. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. And now it looks like we're going to get a timeout here. We've got a man shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. He's got the leg, but it's no good. He missed it right, and they will not cut into that 10-point lead. Well, Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. And the Vancouver offense ready for their next drive. 
Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Here's second and 10. is away but boy headed straight for the sidelines no returning this one it sails out of bounds and they'll spot it right at the 20. Salt Lake City's offense back onto the field last time out they had that long 50 plus yard field goal that they missed and I'm sure on their sideline they're thinking to themselves okay do we still want to try one if we're in that position again and I would dare say that the answer would be yes they're gonna have a lot of confidence in their kicker but just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. Third down, Fields. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Fields. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Now a second and two. Back to throw. Giles. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. On third down, it's Fields. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And that's why he's been the first round draft pick on a running back. Not for just the fancy runs, but these dirty, gritty third and ones, third and twos. That's why you draft him. On first down, Giles. This complete to Langford. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. From the 48-yard line, here's second and two. Off the play fake, Giles. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor, and it's a first down. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it, and they do so and pick up a first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Now a handoff up the middle. Fields. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Now this one over the middle and into the hands of his tight end complete. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 
That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And yeah, that's just a solid, good physical run there as he motors for nine yards. Some good, strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. It's the fullback. His second rushing touchdown on the year. And the Snowhawks have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. And that's why you have the fullback, Charles. Couldn't get it in the play before with a smaller guy. Turned to a little more power. They score it. And now it has to warm the hearts of a lot of old-school football fans. They love when they get to see a little bit of power football. Point after, right down the middle. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. Well, the Vancouver offense ready for their next drive. And their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and ten. Throwing to start the drive. Hillman. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. Simple drag route here. Lined up out left. He tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because... I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. A solid gain of seven yards that time on the keeper and a first down. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A new set of downs after a strong pickup of 16 yards. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Now he dumps this off over the middle. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that will bring up second down. Second and six at the 45-yard line. Off play action. Hillman. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Fifth catch of the afternoon and that gives him a first down. And right side they're going to go option here. And he will lose yardage back to the 34 yard line. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. But that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think it's big boys up front, that offensive line. They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Looking to throw. Hillman. That is caught. And in 
inside the 20 before he's brought down. 60 catches for him now on the year. This last one, a first down. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. On first and 10, Hillman. Caught here by Griffin. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and that's going to bring up second down. Ran the perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion. They would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Great effort there with his second touchdown of the game, number seven on the year. And the Lumberjacks are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. Now that's certainly an important touchdown there and makes this a two-score game. But as we've seen, no lead is safe in this one with the way these two offenses have lit up the scoreboard. And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed. And in a tight game Maybe like this, they're going to take a good long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How's the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Extra point splits the uprights, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Salt Lake City's offense back onto the field. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Throwing on first down, Giles. That one caught downfield by Watson. Down the right sideline, and he's going to get this down inside the five before he's out of bounds. A big play there on the catch and run, 72 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. It's a loss of four on the first down play. It's second and goal back to the eight-yard line now. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. Third and goal. Keep in mind, very possibly four down territory. Back in the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line, but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. And the Vancouver offense ready for their next drive. The field goal we just saw has this now at a one-score game. And on this side of the football, things are getting pretty tenuous, a little stressful. Blood pressure up a little bit, you think? I think up a lot of it. Uh, could you imagine taking the <laughs> pulse right now? Might be like a jackhammer out there on that side of the ball. But here's what the deal is. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 33 yards that time. 
Well, far enough, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Down to the 10. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Is that penalty wipe out the INT? You'd hate to be the teammate that caused that penalty and wiped out the interception. You gotta face that guy in the locker room. Not a lot of fun for you, and you hurt your squad. Now a pass dumped off to his running back. No gain on the play. And that'll bring up second down. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's our visitors with the football as we get you reset. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. Wow, a personal foul at this stage in the fourth. Hard to believe. Really hard to believe. And now that glow of hope that you had begins to flicker out, doesn't it? Yeah. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Going for the knockout punch. They'll try and run. And he will take this one in for a touchdown. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Lumberjacks look like they're going to get back in the win column as they extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. So he had the nice run to get him down there. Was stopped just short of the goal line, but they go right back to him, CD, and he delivers to finish the drive off. A little extra determination there, don't you think, partner? You notice he didn't tap on his helmet and say, get me out after the run down to the end zone. He said, I almost got in. I'm going to get in on my own. I'm staying in. And he carries it across the goal line. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead now up to 14. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. The situation for him offensively as follows. Down by two touchdowns. A minute 46 to go. A crushing loss to their playoff chances on the horizon. Barring a huge turnaround here. Starting with first and 10. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. To throw on second down, Giles. He finds his man, complete. That's Fields. Now another timeout called for by the offense as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Off the play fake. Giles. And this one incomplete. Threw it down at the feet of his receiver. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. 
Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. Clock at 30 seconds, second and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And it's caught. And he takes this one into the end zone. And all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. you got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Point after, right down the middle. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So with under 30 seconds to play, this is the game right here. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. The risk-reward of the onside kick. When you don't get it, the risk comes out to play. And here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them. And field position leads you to that type of play calling. And whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things, now that they've given up that type of field position, the advantage has switched to their opponent. Victory very much in sight now as they'll take a knee. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as the clock stops with 23 seconds to go in the game. And that knee will do it. So they snap the losing streak. Always a good feeling. Yeah, I don't know if this one right here when they're taking a knee is as much exultation as exhalation, right? They just breathe a sigh of relief. Finally got a win, needed one desperately. Well, somebody lit a fire under that offense during the break, Charles. Remember, they trailed at intermission. They come out, they have the big second half, and that lifts them to the victory. And Brandon, trailing at halftime, we always talk about teams making adjustments. You know what the best adjustments usually are? It's just executing better. Because the game plan you put in place at the beginning of the week often still holds. You don't have to make wholesale changes. You just have to do it a little bit better, a little cleaner. And they did that in the second half, and that led them to victory. So for Vancouver, it's an important win for their playoff hopes as they move to 8-4. and four. And they'll get another road date next week. Meanwhile, for Salt Lake City, they can ill afford to drop too many more as they fall to seven and six on the year. And they'll get the extra week to think about this one as they return to action in two weeks' time. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.